Greetings and salutations. This is Adam from CNYC, and today we have another video concerning baptism, water baptism. Again, this is all part of the foundations. If you haven't seen the other videos concerning the foundations, whether they be of baptism or otherwise, look into the playlist and enjoy. Now, today we have a video from Theo Hartzell speaking about why we must be baptized in Jesus' name, not the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, this also ties into uh, other, other topics, such as the Trinity, um, and how that's incorrect, uh, that there is one God, not three separate persons, but one person, and that person is Jesus Christ, who is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we're going to see uh, exactly what Theo Hartzell has to say about that as well. Uh, as always, I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Theo Hartzell. In today's video, I want to talk to you about Jesus' name baptism. Specifically, we're going to look at in Matthew 28, verse 19, when it says, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Some people interpret that, that they are supposed to repeat that phrase word for word when they're baptizing someone, not understanding what the Greek word for name actually means. We're going to get into it in a minute, but the Greek word for name is the Greek word onoma. This is very, very important and very, very critical because if you repeat the phrase, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and never say the name Jesus, you never fulfilled the scripture because you never said the onoma. In this video, we're going to look at the word name in the Greek to identify why Jesus said, I want you to baptize in the name or the onoma of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And Matthew 28 verse 19 is actually commanding you to baptize people in the name of Jesus Christ. If you baptize, repeating the phrase, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and you never said the name Jesus, you never actually fulfilled Matthew 28 verse 19 in the first place. So the first thing that I want to do is simply go to Matthew chapter 28. It says, and I'm going to jump into verse 18, and I'm going to try to explain this very slowly. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Looking at verse 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, something I want you to notice in verse 19 is it said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to explain something that is going to be incredibly important for you to get. Right there when Jesus said baptizing them in the name, the Greek word for name in the Greek is the Greek word G3686, which is the Greek word onoma. What does the Greek word onoma mean? According to Vine's Expository Dictionary, it says this, is used in general of the name by which a person or a thing is called. Did you hear that? The word onoma is the name by which a person or a thing is called. In other words, it's the name of a certain, particular, specific individual. This is very critical and very important. Looking at the Thayer Greek Dictionary, it says it like this. That word onoma means name universally of proper names. Persons reckoned by a name. According to the International Bible Study Encyclopedia, this word onoma means a name is that by which a person, place, or thing is marked and known. The reason I wanted to give you those definitions is because the word name in the Greek is onoma. And onoma can only be satisfied 
with the name of a particular specific person, place, or thing. According to the Thayer Greek Dictionary, it's universally used of proper names. And so you have to identify, okay, what is a proper name? And I'm about to show you it means a proper noun. When you go to a website like Grammarly to try to figure out what is a proper noun or a proper name, because we need to put this in context, why is the word onoma very important? According to Grammarly, a proper noun is a specific, in other words, not generic, it is a specific name for a particular person, place, or thing. Because they endow nouns with a specific name, they are also called proper names. That ties back into exactly what we just saw from the Thayer Greek Dictionary about the word onoma. Now listen to this next part. This is very important. Every noun can be classified as either common or proper. A common noun is the generic name for one item in a class or group, such as palace, girl, book. Notice, none of those tell you or identify what palace, what girl, what book. They're all generic. They do not give you the name or tell you which person, which place, what building, what book. But going on, Grammarly says, a proper noun, on the other hand, names a noun precisely. Buckingham Palace, Cynthia, War and Peace. In other words, the proper noun or the proper name gives an identifier to the common noun. Putting this in perspective for this lesson in Matthew 28, verse 19, son is a generic common noun that does not identify or name which son. It's a generic common noun and cannot satisfy the Greek word onoma because onoma is asking for the proper noun or the proper name of one specific individual. Jesus was not telling you to baptize saying the, the word son because son does not satisfy the Greek word onoma. The word father is also a generic common noun. It does not identify which father. Which father? Whose father? Father is a common generic noun and does not satisfy the Greek word onoma, which was asking for the identifier of a particular person, place, or thing. The word for spirit is also a generic common noun. What spirit? There's no name to identify what spirit that we're talking about. If you use the word spirit by itself, what spirit? Which spirit? Again, that word spirit does not fulfill and does not satisfy the word onoma. So when Jesus is speaking in Matthew 28, verse 19, and he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name onoma, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, He is not commanding you or telling you or giving you a decree to go repeat that phrase and try to get people baptized saying that phrase because saying that phrase never identified or said what the onoma was of the Father, what the onoma was of the Son, or what the onoma was of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. In fact, I've often explained it to people like this. If you sit there and you say, I baptize you right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, all of heaven and earth is waiting for you to say the name. But if you never say the name Jesus, you never invoked or never called on or never uttered the name Jesus in the first place. Jesus was not asking you to repeat that word for word because to repeat it word for word does not fulfill what he was actually commanding you to do. Matthew 28, verse 19, is actually a Jesus name, water baptism verse, because Jesus Christ himself is actually saying, I want you to baptize in the onoma, the name, of one specific, certain identifying individual. And the only way Onama can be satisfied is by giving the name of the one specific individual that you're supposed to baptize in. Matthew 28 verse 19 was never intended or 
meant to be interpreted that you repeat Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and never say the name Jesus Christ. Because if you never say the name Jesus, then you did not fulfill it because it's asking for an onoma, a proper noun or a proper name. If you say Father, it could be any father that has ever lived and will ever live. It is a generic common noun and cannot satisfy onoma. If you say spirit, spirit is also a generic common noun and cannot satisfy the Greek word onoma because spirit never identifies what spirit, what Jesus was actually saying. And I'm about to show you some verses to prove this. But what Jesus was actually saying is, I want you to baptize in the onoma, the specific name of one particular individual, and that name is the same name for the Father and for the Son and for the Holy Ghost. So if that's the case, then you have to ask yourself the question, what is the one name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost that will satisfy and fulfill the Greek word onoma in Matthew 28, verse 19, because in other words, Jesus was saying, I want you to baptize in Jesus' name, which is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Because when you go to John chapter 5, verse 43, and Jesus is talking, Jesus says, I am come in my Father's name. That word name right there is the same Greek word, 3686 onoma. Jesus said, I am come in my Father's onoma. So when you look at the name Jesus, that is the name of the Father. And when you look in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it says, And she shall bring forth a son. Notice that word son because that's a generic common noun. Let's see if an identifier is put on that word. And thou shalt call his name, the Greek word, 3686, thou shalt call his onoma, Jesus. This verse is saying that the onoma of the Son is none other than Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, are you seeing what I'm showing you right here? The onoma of the Son is Jesus. The onoma of the Father is is Jesus. So let's identify what is the name of the Spirit. When you look at John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, my onoma. It's the same Greek word, 3686, onoma. This is very important because this also identifies that the name of of the ghost or the spirit, the Greek word pneuma, the identifying name of the Holy Ghost is none other than the onoma that Jesus Christ came in, and that is Jesus. The reason that this is important is because when you go back to Matthew 28, 19, and Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. 3686, onoma. Baptize them in the onoma. And that word onoma can only be satisfied by the name of one particular specific individual. This scripture is actually a Jesus name baptism verse because we are commanded to baptize in the name of one particular specific individual and the word onoma can be satisfied only by calling on the name, the proper noun or the proper name of the identified individual. And one thing that I think is amazing is people get so hung up on Matthew 28 verse 19 and don't go to the sister passage that's found in Luke chapter 24, which is at the exact same time and the exact same moment as Matthew 28 verse 19. But when you look in Luke chapter 24, the Bible says, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Listen to this. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, 
beginning at Jerusalem. That word for name right there is 3686, which is the Greek word onoma, which is asking for the name of one particular specific individual. The name of who? We saw in verse 46, it was the name of the Christ. Well, who was the Christ? It was Jesus. This verse in verse 47 is saying that repentance and remission of sins, which is in water baptism, should be preached in the onoma of one specific individual, and that is Jesus Christ. Did it say that you need to preach repentance and remission of sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? No, it said you need to do it in the onoma. What was the onoma? Verse 46 shows us it was the onoma of the Christ. Who was the Christ? It was Jesus. I know I'm going over this a lot over and over, but I'm trying to help you understand it as simply as I can. The Greek word onoma can only be satisfied by the name of a particular, specific, certain individual. Verse 46 told us who that was. It was the Christ. Who was the Christ? The Christ was Jesus. So this verse goes again with Matthew 28, verse 19. And this verse agrees with it, saying that repentance and remission of sins, which is in water baptism, is in none other than the onoma of one specific individual. And that one specific individual is the name Jesus Christ. If you say Father, and if you say Son, and Holy Ghost, you never said the onoma. The Bible, this reminds me of the Bible verse in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, which says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The onoma of Jesus Christ. Not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I'm sorry if I'm going over this too much, but I really want this to sink into you. That if you say I baptize you in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and you never say the name Jesus, then you never fulfilled the scripture. You never completed what Jesus told you to do. You haven't been properly baptized. And you're not even fulfilling or obeying what the scriptures commanded you to do because of your lack of understanding what the Greek word onoma actually means and that it can only be satisfied by the name of a particular, specific, certain individual. And some people will tell me, well, Brother Theo, when I say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, then God understands that the name of Jesus was implied. And I've already made a whole separate video about that. Is the name Jesus implied when you say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? I'm not going to take the time to go into it in great depth in this video. If you want to understand and fully grasp, is the name Jesus implied in water baptism when you say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Then go watch that video. But let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 38 to see how the Apostle Peter, who was given the keys of the kingdom by Jesus Christ himself, how did the Apostle Peter and all the other disciples who are in agreement with Peter interpret Matthew 28, verse 19? And how did they put that in application? And how did they administer baptism? And what did they tell people to do when they got baptized? When you turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name. That word in the Greek for name right there is the Greek word 3686, onoma. Let me say it like this. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the onoma of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, remission of sins right there, ties back into Luke chapter 24, repentance and remission of sins in the onoma of the Christ. This verse is tying in perfectly with Matthew 28, verse 19, and Luke chapter 24. Now, I want to draw your attention to something very important right here, that the apostle Peter is making the connection between Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, when Jesus said, I want you to baptize in the onoma of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, the Apostle Peter now takes it and put it in context and, and puts it and brings it all together. 
where we understand that the onima was truly none other than the name Jesus Christ. The apostle Peter was given the keys of the kingdom, and he's going to unlock it for all the people in the New Testament Bible. And right here, the apostle Peter links onima and Jesus Christ together to say that the onima of the Father was Jesus, the onima of the Son was Jesus, and the onima of the Holy Spirit was none other than Jesus Christ. And if you want to fulfill Matthew 28, verse 19, and if you want to fulfill Luke chapter 24, the way that you do that is you baptize people in the onima of Jesus Christ because onima, the name of one specific individual, proper noun, proper name, is none other than Jesus Christ himself. Brothers and sisters, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, is fulfilling and coming into agreement with Matthew 28, verse 19, and Luke 24, verse 47, and tying them all together and helping us to understand. You know what? If I baptize somebody, I better baptize them, calling on the onima of one specific individual that was the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and that name is Jesus Christ. I want you to understand the importance of this, because if you baptize somebody and you never call on the name Jesus Christ, then you did not fulfill Matthew 28, you did not fulfill Luke chapter 24, verse 47, you did not fulfill Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and all the other scriptures in the New Testament. In fact, I'll tell you this, there's not one single scripture in the New Testament Bible where anybody was ever baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because they all understood, hey, what's the onima of the Father, the onima of the Son, and the onima of the Holy Spirit? It's none other than Jesus Christ. All of it is encapsulated in the name Jesus Christ. And I've also had people tell me, well, Brother Theo, water baptism and Jesus' name baptism was only for the Jews. It wasn't for the Gentiles. Gentiles don't have to be baptized in Jesus' name, and I'm going to tell you that is emphatically a lie and a misinterpretation of the Scriptures, and they haven't even read the Bible because the epistles were written to New Testament churches that were all over Asia Minor, which was a majority of Gentile believers. And one of the things that I want to say in that is what does water baptism actually do? And we're going to put it in context of these Gentile believers in the book of Romans. And I'm going to show you why water baptism is important and how we're to be water baptized. Because when you look at Romans chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us, as we're baptized, into Jesus Christ. Notice that right there, into Jesus Christ. Did it say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? And the answer is no. It said as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Notice that word right there, his, specific, individual, singular, identifying Jesus Christ. The reason that's important, it didn't say we were baptized into them in their death. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It says we were baptized into Jesus Christ, into his death. Jesus is the one who died on the cross, and therefore we are baptized into Jesus Christ. Verse 4, therefore we are buried with him. Notice that again, specific and individual to Jesus Christ. Part of the reason I want to highlight this, and this is so important, is because this goes back and reinforces what we've already seen, that the people that were being baptized in the New Testament, whether Jew or Samaritan or Gentile, were all being baptized into the onima of Jesus Christ. But not only that, that when you are baptized into Jesus Christ, you are being buried with him so that you can be raised like him. You might say, Brother Theo, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that the Bible commands us to be baptized in Jesus' name because you are being buried with Jesus when you're baptized in his name. 
And if you're not baptized in Jesus Christ, then you never got buried or died in Jesus, and you're not going to be raised in Jesus if you didn't die in Jesus. And this goes back to part of the videos I've made about the rapture and who are the ones that are being raptured because he said those that are dead in Christ and those that are alive and remain in Christ, the way that you get... I just want to put a caveat here. I do not believe in the rapture. Uh, we're going to discuss what exactly uh, the resurrection of the dead looks like uh, at a later video. That's part of the foundations. Uh, I just want to put that caveat there that the rapture... Uh, and we'll discuss why concerning... Uh, I'll make a video about um, you know, trials and tribulations, why the rapture is, is biblically unsound. In Christ is to be baptized in his name and to receive his spirit in you, evidenced by speaking in tongues, which is the same gospel plan that we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The apostle Peter said, you want to be saved? You want to know what to do? Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's literally the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You need to die. You need to be buried in water baptism in Jesus' name, and you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And that is the three-step plan, gospel plan of salvation. Now, another thing that I want to highlight just for a moment is you may say, well, how do I actually call on the name? Or how do I invoke the name of Jesus? How does this happen? What's happening? And I've, I've talked about this in other videos, but the way it happens is it's the Greek word epikalelmai, which means to be surnamed or to take a name on you. When you get baptized in Jesus' name, you are literally and actually taking the name of Jesus Christ upon you in water baptism. You literally take Jesus' name and put it on your name. It means to be surnamed. In fact, a verse that I can give you is looking at Acts chapter 2, verse 21. It says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name, notice that name, 3686, the onima of the Lord. Who's the Lord? The Lord was Jesus. So whosoever shall call on the onima of Jesus, shall be saved. But notice that phrase right there, shall call on. Those three words are actually one Greek word, G, 1941, epikalelmai, which means to put a name upon someone or surname them, to permit oneself to be surnamed, to be named after someone, to call something or someone, to invoke, to call upon by pronouncing the name of Jehovah, it also means upon whom my name is called, to call upon a name in baptism, to call upon or invoke as witness. Putting this in context and perspective, in the New Testament, what was taking place is the people were being water baptized in the onima of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and that was epikalelma, to take the name of someone upon you. In other words, when you are water baptized in Jesus' name, the name of Jesus Christ is being placed upon you, and you now inherit and take on the name of the Father, and you are named after the family of God. And this is one reason that I believe with all of my heart that when Jesus said, many are going to stand before me in that day, and they're going to say, oh, Lord, but we cast out devils in your name. We did signs and wonders and miracles, and we did all of these wonderful, notable, great things in your name. And he says, I don't know you. Who are you? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I believe part of the reason is, is because they never had the family name. They were not in the family of Jesus Christ. And therefore, he said, I don't know you. You're not in covenant with me. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are understanding the importance of this. If you do not say the onima, Jesus Christ, in baptism, you never epikalelmai, or called on, or invoked the name of Jesus Christ on them in water baptism, and therefore they are not surnamed or named in the family. And when Jesus Christ says, depart from me, I never knew you, it part of the reason is, because you did not have the family name. 
you never came into agreement with the covenant of the New Testament in Acts 2.38 to repent of your sins, to be baptized in Jesus' name, and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And another thing that I like to point out to people is, well, how was the Apostle Paul baptized? Because... I just want to add to what this gentleman is saying here. Go to Blue Letter Bible. Uh, if we go to... Well, let me see here. Give me one second. Named Heaven Earth. There's a specific verse that comes to mind. Ephesians 3. Verse 14 to 15, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Right? The whole family. The saints that are in heaven and the saints that are on the earth are named. Again, how are they named? By taking on his name, just as the uh, hard soul is saying here. Again, baptism specifically in the name of Jesus is absolutely necessary. Again, just from like a... Uh, even, not even a theological standpoint, if apostles, if the original apostles did something a certain way, a way and they were commissioned specifically face-to-face -face by God, why would you deviate from that? Just from a practical standpoint, would you not want to cons conserve what was initially done by God's hands? Because people say, well, the Apostle Paul said it's not by works, it's by faith and faith alone. And, and you don't have to do any of that stuff because all of that is works. Well, I want you to understand that the Apostle Paul was water baptized. The Apostle Paul was not baptized saying Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When you look at Acts chapter 22, verse 16, and this is Ananias talking to the Apostle Paul, and he says, and now... Why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Listen to this. Calling on the onama of the Lord. What was the onama of the Lord? The onama of the Lord was Jesus Christ. The apostle Paul is being baptized in Jesus' name. He is not being baptized calling on Father, calling on Son, calling on Holy Ghost, Epikaleomai. He's baptized, epikaleoma, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in water baptism. The reason this is important is because this ties into the rest of the New Testament Bible in the Apostle Paul's letters when he was commanding them to be water baptized in Jesus' name. When you read the epistles, you'll understand that everyone was baptized, epikaleoma, calling on the onama of Jesus Christ. They were baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They were baptized calling on the name Jesus so that they could be surnamed and named into the family of Jesus Christ. A perfect example I can give you from the Apostle Paul is in Acts chapter 19, verse 4. Then said Paul, John, verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name, Onema, of the Lord Jesus. Were they baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? No, they were baptized in the Onema, or the proper noun, the proper name, of one specific individual, and that onama of the one specific individual was none other than Jesus Christ. The reason I highlighted this is because some people will say, well, Brother Theo, are you telling me that I need to be rebaptized in Jesus' name if I was baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? The Apostle Paul answers the question. The Apostle Paul says, if you've been baptized and did not call on the onama of Jesus Christ when you got baptized, you need to get rebaptized in the onama of Jesus Christ, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus while you're getting baptized because you are epikaleomai, calling on 
being surnamed and invoking the name of Jesus while you're being buried with him to identify with him and come in coconio and to come in covenant with him. Looking in Acts chapter 10. Uh, that's exactly why uh, if you have been baptized according to the Trinitarian perspective, um, you need to be rebaptized again uh, in order to enter into the covenant with Christ. You have to obey Christ. Um, Christ was speaking through the original apostles, and he was working signs and wonders with them. Uh, and they all baptized in the name of Jesus. So again, I, I implore you to investigate this matter. Review this video. Look at all the scriptures that we've been going through. Um, do your pastors go through this painstaking detail? Uh, do they really have a love for the truth as Theo Hartzell does? Have you looked into the scriptures with such intensity and an open mind? You might say, well, you know, I know what the whole, this Trinity doctrine has done for me and I've been baptized and I feel good. God doesn't care about your feelings. He cares about whether or not you're fulfilling his will. Jesus Christ didn't want to go to the cross, and yet he pushed through it anyways. He obeyed, and now he's ascended onto heavenly places. It even is spoken of of Peter. Jesus says unto him after he resurrected that men will take you to places where you don't want to go. This is well into that he's a seasoned apostle, yet there's something that he doesn't want to do. He has to be put to death. And yet, despite that all, Peter also obeyed as well. So again, God recognizes your feelings, and if your feelings come in direct contradiction to his will, they will be put aside. When the apostle Peter was talking to the Gentiles, in verse 47, the apostle Peter says, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them. Notice that he commanded them. He did not ask them. He didn't say, if you feel like it, if you want to, if you want to satisfy your conscience, maybe you want to get your family together and, and talk about it and see if y'all can come into agreement with it. It says, he commanded them to be baptized. And the reason that I want to highlight this is some people say, well, baptism was not important. And it's just something you can do to satisfy your conscience or if you feel like it. But it's not necessary and you don't have to do it. The Bible says that the apostle Peter, the one who had the keys to the kingdom, commanded them. He didn't ask him if they felt like it. He didn't ask him if they thought it was a good idea. He didn't ask him if they wanted to flip a coin and see if it's something they needed to do. The Bible says that the apostle Peter commanded them to be baptized in the onoma of the Lord Jesus. Notice also that he did not command them to be baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He commanded them to be baptized in the onoma, the name of one specific, particular, certain individual who was that? Of the Lord. Who was the name of the Lord? The onoma of the Lord was none other than Jesus Christ. Looking in Acts chapter 8, and this is speaking about the Samaritans, and there's a revival going on. We're going to just get in the middle of this story. But verse 16 says, For as yet he, speaking about the Holy Ghost, was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name onoma of the Lord Jesus. How were they baptized? Were they baptized in Father and Son and Holy Ghost? Or were they baptized in the onoma of the Lord Jesus? This verse says that the Samaritans and everyone in revival were there, were baptized in the onoma of the Lord Jesus. Not Father, not Son, not Holy Ghost, because they do not say the name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. The reason I made it is I want you to know and understand that you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The apostle Peter and Paul and all the other disciples emphatically, beyond a shadow of a doubt, said, you're not baptized in Father and Son and Holy Ghost. You're baptized epikalemi, 
calling on the name or invoking the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism because the only way that you can satisfy the Greek word onoma is by the name of a particular, specific, certain individual. So what is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Son? What is the name of the Holy Ghost? They're all encapsulated and incorporated in the name Jesus Christ. And therefore, the Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 10, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every scripture in the New Testament says that we are to be baptized in the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, whatever it was, because Jesus is the name that satisfies the Greek word onoma. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name for whatever reason, perhaps you were baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and never said the name Jesus, then I am directing you, commanding you, imploring you, asking you, like the Apostle Peter, commanding you, get rebaptized in Jesus' name. Don't wait. Don't delay. It takes five minutes to repent of your sins and five minutes to get water baptized in Jesus' name. Don't put it off. Don't meet God without the name of Jesus on you. Don't die and face eternity in the day of judgment without the name of Jesus on you. It's so easy to just get baptized right. It's so easy to just do it the right way, the biblical way, the godly way, to call on the name of Jesus. I want to see you in heaven. I want to dance down those golden streets and bust through those pearly gates and, and jump up in Jesus' lap and be in eternity with you forever. I implore you and ask you and compel you, get rebaptized in Jesus' name. Until next time, God bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. You pray for me, and I'll be praying for you. God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one.